Hi, I'm Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I put together the strawberry basket quilt made from vintage quilt blocks. Now my plan for this top would be to put these blocks on point and then put alternate blocks around them. So uh, we would have Well, you know what an alternate setting would be on point with an alternate alternate blocks would be in these spaces here so um, what I've been doing since I taped the part where I was washing the blocks was shopping for the fabrics to go in these alternate blocks as well as some border fabri fabric and what I came up with was I have this piece here and this is a tone-on-tone -tone fabric and uh, it's a modern fabric of course and so the colors of this goes pretty well with the the background fabric in these blocks um, but I wasn't real happy with this so I had a piece or actually two pieces of fabric um, these are older fabrics they're not vintage but they are older fabrics and um, they were part of my mother's stash <clears throat> and there's two one yard pieces and this is a stripe with little hearts running through it and it's just kind of an off-white on top of an off-white it's it's another color that will work well with these blocks the thing will be is if this is printed um, on grain real well and if I can cut it so it's straight so this is a possibility there's two yards here I'm not sure quite sure if that's enough or not I bought more of this so we'll see I'm going to measure it out and uh, calculate how to get this, this cut out and we'll see how that goes now for um, for the borders, I wanted to do blue. Now we've got two different blues here. We've got this navy blue and then we've got the cadet blue. If I can get these separated again, here we go. So whatever I chose isn't going to, is not going to match both of these colors. It's going to match one or the other. So today uh, I went to the quilt shop again and found this fabric. And this is it isn't a reproduction or anything it's a little bit duller than what I have here but it's not bad and then it goes well with this too so I may use that and then I have another piece that I bought at a different store and this is more of the navy blue that goes better with this. So I have two possibilities here for the border and I may use them both, I haven't decided yet. But um, you know, it's hard to match the colors in vintage quilts because you know, these, most likely these were in a shirt or a dress or something, fabric had been worn, the clothing had been worn and then cut up to make quilt blocks so um, it's not going to be the original color to begin with so you know this is this is what I've got and I'm going to play around with this and then see how this works getting ready to start on the strawberry basket quilt and I wanted to show you where I'm at um, I've got the blocks um, all squared up and they're looking pretty nice and then I've got the cutting uh, I've cut out the setting triangles and the alternate squares and the corners triangles so um, the way and I have them all pinned up on my design wall and right now they are actually um, pinned on top of another quilt that's hanging up here and I wanted to show you a little bit about how I went ahead and um, figured out what size to cut these. Um, I use an app. Um, it's Robert Kaufman's Quilt Calc and it's um, really easy to use and I just go into where it says set in and corner triangle and I 
click on that and then it says length of the finished square size and that would be the these squares here so if these were sewn in what size would they be now this is a 10 inch unfinished so I want to know the finished side and using a quarter inch seam allowance a finished size would be nine and a half so I'm typing in 9.5 and clicking go and it says for the unfinished set of triangles you need to cut squares 14 and 3 quarter inches now that what they're talking about unfinished set of triangles is the setting triangles on the sides of the quilt that's not talking about the corner triangles because the next line says unfinished corner triangle is seven five eighths so I cut the squares to those measurements and the setting triangles the 14 and three quarter inch squares and I cut them in fourth so diagonally diagonally twice on each corner and then for the corner triangles um, you just cut those in half diagonally once so that gives me the proper size so I've used this app several times it, it always works really well anyway it's a good app and uh, I'm gonna get started on sewing this top together and I'll show you a little footage of that okay I'm going to leave my microphone on um, I know you're not going to be able to see me but uh, I'll leave this on so you can at least hear me and uh, see if I can get that secure I am using my Singer um, 1591 uh, like I did for the Broken Star Quilt and I'm just lining up this triangle here and doing quarter inch seam now my um, Stitch length is at 14 stitches per inch. No, 12 stitches per inch. And I'm just going to take it slow right here. Now this machine has a knee lever control for the presser foot instead of a presser foot. Um, Actually, it's, you can go either way. You can put it on the floor, you can use it as a knee lever. And I like it as a knee lever, so that way I don't have to chase my presser foot all around the floor. Okay, here we go. Now you can always use um, a wider a longer stitch length which I may do on this but here we go we're got that seam done and I'm going to press this open and then I'm going to go ahead and place this on the design wall in the position that it goes in so that I don't get confused it's so when you're doing on point um, quilts instead of doing sewing your rows together horizontally you're doing them diagonally and um, it can be easy to get lost if you're not keeping everything in order as you quilt. So this is going to need one more setting triangle on the bottom. So I'm going to get that and attach that and then put it on the design wall. And I chose to go with the floral tan fabric um, because when I got to thinking about cutting out the setting triangles, it would be a little challenging to get all of those stripes running in the right direction so um, I decided not to mess with that you just go with a non-directional fabric and I just really love this machine it just pulls fabric in so easy Now the first sewing machine I ever owned had a rubberized feed dog right in here and I used it so much I wore out those feed dogs and those had to be replaced and um, the last machine I owned um, got to where it wouldn't pull the fabric in straight it was pulling it to the side okay so here is 
my corner triangle and what I want to do is just get this as centered as best as I can and to do that I'm just really eyeballing these two edges to see that they are going the right direction. Now the way these are cut the biased edge is the edge that I am seaming on um, on this piece and it was also a bias edge here and here so have to be careful not to stretch those. Yeah, that turned out well. And I am using a modern quarter inch piecing foot. This isn't the foot that came with the machine. So here we go. Now I have this bottom right hand corner of the quilt is done. So just the one block and the two setting triangles and then the corner triangle. So I'm going to press those and put them back on the board and um, move on to the next row. Okay, here's my design wall. You can see I've got a quilt hanging up behind this. I uh, wasn't ready to take it down yet. But here's uh, the quilt. Um, the top part up here is just the blocks laid out before it's pieced. And then as we move down, you can see these um, last two rows, the right hand corner and then the row above that. Those are already sewn together. So what I'm doing next is um, taking off that third row off of the board and then I'll stitch that together and press it and then put it back on the board. So I'm just going to go through this process until I have this whole top put together. And then I'll measure it and cut the borders and uh, then I'll be ready to quilt. Okay, those are the rows um, all sewn together, or all the blocks sewn together in rows. The rows aren't sewn together yet. That's my next step. But uh, here you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to sew those rows together later after, after dinner sometime or maybe tomorrow, depending on how I feel after dinner. Okay, here's the quilt at this point. It's all stitched together. And I'm going to get a different view of it here in a minute. Um, this is kind of at an angle. But you can see I can get the whole quilt in from here just by panning here. So we are looking pretty good. And... Um, Next step is the inner and outer border. Now I'm going to wait and do that tomorrow as it's uh, getting late again and uh, I'm too tired to tackle math at the moment. So I will measure this top and um, then cut the inner borders and attach those and then measure again and count and then cut the outer borders and attach those. Okay, I have the borders on the strawberry basket quilt now and it is all ready to go on the machine. I think it turned out pretty well and I'm looking forward to getting it quilted. Right now it's um, gonna I'm gonna take it down from the design wall so that it won't stretch out of shape but the borders went on easily and um, I think the I think it's just the right amount of color in that blue border. My concern was it not being able to blend well with the blocks, but I think it blends pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with this. And I think it'll make a nice addition to my collection. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my newest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.